voice is so amazing that it caused one of the biggest pop divas of all time to take notice. But that doesn't mean the road Kelly Price has taken along her journey in the music industry has been an easy one. From dealing with multiple traumatic experiences as a child, to fighting for respect at the beginning of her career due to her physical appearance, she's had to overcome numerous obstacles to become an R&B superstar. Kelly Sherelle Price was born the second of three daughters in Queens, New York. Early on, her musical roots were planted in the church. It's where, as a toddler, she'd sing her first solo in the children's choir and was fittingly blessed with the moniker, Little Mahalia. I grew up in a family full of singers and musicians. Everybody in my family wrote songs and played one or more instruments. By the age of 12, Kelly would begin laying down background vocals when she was at a recording session with her mother, and the producer overheard her perfectly singing the notes to his song. By her late teens, she'd become the it girl for those who were in need of a vocalist to record their music when shopping it to labels. Even though Kelly wasn't getting paid for her efforts, her free labor would pay off by sharpening her studio and production skills. Throughout Kelly's childhood, she would be forced to deal with many traumatic experiences, which makes her commitment to her music that much more inspiring amidst everything else she was dealing with. At the age of three, she was intimately violated by a trusted family member. At nine, her drug-addicted father passed away. The family also went through bouts of homelessness. 1992 would be a positive life-changing year for Kelly in more ways than one, including meeting and working with other A-list artists. It all started with her first professional engagement, which was singing backup for George Michael at Madison Square Garden in New York City. He was in town for several concert dates and wasn't too pleased with the results the local backup singers were giving. He wanted a more gospel sound behind him, so he called up his label, Sony, and requested that they find someone else. A friend of a friend told Kelly about the gig, and the next thing she knew, she was on one of the most famous stages in the world, singing back up for one of the biggest pop stars in the world. The following month, when Mariah Carey was set to perform at the Grammys, the people at Sony remembered Kelly and asked her to join Mariah's regular backup singers for that night. No one knew at the time, but 18-year-old Kelly was also pregnant. Her situation would serve her well though when, while dealing with some symptoms that prevented her from taking a break to eat with the rest of the crew during rehearsal, she opted instead to sit at the piano and started singing. Lo and behold, Mariah walked into the room at that very moment and heard her amazing talent. By the end of the day, Kelly had a sit-down conversation with Sony president Tommy Mottola, the other backup singers, and Mariah herself about her coming on the road with them. She said yes, not really believing that it would truly happen. But a few weeks later, things would get kicked off in a big way. Kelly got a call to participate in Mariah's infamous MTV Unplugged performance. It would be the first engagement of a nearly six-year working relationship. After that, Kelly naturally wanted to pursue her own solo singing career. However, she decided instead it was better to put her time and energy into songwriting for other artists. After repeatedly being told that she could never make it as a mainstream R&B or pop artist because both her voice and her body were too big. By taking the path of a writer first, she actually ended up walking into a world of amazing learning experiences and in no time became one of the most sought after songwriters in the music industry, especially in the R&B and hip hop community. Opportunities to record, produce, share stages with, and pen songs for a plethora of artists spanning multiple genres of music also began to pour in. In 1996, after nearly a year of touring with both Puff Daddy and the family and the Isley Brothers, Kelly found herself being wooed by them both to sign to their labels. Ultimately, she went with the Isleys' T-neck record. There were no hard feelings between her and Puff, though. They even continued to work together and helped to boost the excitement of Kelly's solo debut with her now legendary performance on the Notorious B.I.G.'s 1997 number one hit, Mo Money, Mo Problems. Soul of a Woman, Kelly's debut album dropped in the summer of 1998. The album's first and most popular single, Friend of Mine, which tells the story of a woman whose husband cheated on her with her best friend, became a top 20 pop hit and went all the way to number one on the R&B chart. She was my best friend. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We were yeah. Thick and thick. At the end of that year, Kelly experienced another number one R&B hit as a featured artist along with Faith Evans on Whitney Houston's track, Heartbreak Hotel. It just missed the top spot on the Hot 100, coming in at number two. Kelly's second album, Mirror Mirror, was released two years later. 
It features the singles You Should Have Told Me and the Grammy Award nominated As We Lay. Over the next decade, she released three more studio albums, including a Christmas album and her first live gospel album. Then, after a long self-imposed hiatus to raise her children and spend more time with family, Kelly returned to the music scene as an independent artist in 2011 with the self-titled album, Kelly, which garnered her four Grammy nominations. She followed that up with 2014's Sing, Pray, Love, Volume 1, Sing. On February 9, 2012, in a pre-Grammy party to celebrate Kelly's nominations, the singer sang Jesus Loves Me with friend Whitney Houston in what turned out to be Whitney's last public performance two days before her death. The next year, Kelly signed on to be part of the cast of the first season of TV One's R&B Divas Los Angeles. She immediately became the center of conflict and perceived as the villain of the group. She told the Christian Post in 2013, I think the biggest misconception is that I was combative with the ladies. That didn't happen. I've been disrespected. I've been cursed at by some of the production people on the set. A lot of things that happen that the public will never know about that I have well documented if I need to produce otherwise. She did eventually admit that she agreed to put on a show of sorts with one particular producer in an effort to create drama and make the show more interesting. After more than 20 years of marriage, Kelly decided it was time to end her legal union and business partnership to husbander Jeffrey Roll in 2015. She told alwaysalist.com, after the untimely death of my sister last year, it weighed on me heavily that this was something we needed to do. I ultimately made the decision to live the best life I can. I ended things because I didn't want to compromise what true happiness was anymore. There are no hard feelings, and I will love Jeff until the day I die. According to the docs, she requested no spousal support for either side and said there's no community property to fight over. They do have two children together, but since they're adults, there wasn't any custody issues to discuss. Years later, in a 2021 interview with The Breakfast Club, Kelly spoke about how hard it was to leave the long-term relationship after years of hurt, mistrust, and outside children. 2020 was not only a difficult year for millions of people worldwide, it was extremely hard for Kelly on a personal level. She lost her grandfather in April, and six months later, her mother also died unexpectedly. In September 2021, Kelly was declared missing as reported by TMZ. She was listed as such following a welfare check conducted at her home. Her legal representative said she was not missing, but in fact, safe and recovering from COVID at a private location. About a week later, she addressed everything with TMZ and shared the incredible story of her hospitalization and claims that at one point, she was medically dead. She insists that she was never actually missing, despite some of her family members insisting she had vanished without a trace. Kelly said that she chose to isolate herself as she recovered and was avoiding her family, who she doesn't routinely stay in touch with. During the incident, her family also told police her boyfriend, Daryl Crump, was keeping Kelly from speaking to her friends and family. Little did they know, Daryl wasn't her boyfriend. He was her husband, having married him in November 2020. Today, she continues to do her thing on the mic. Her last album, a five-track EP titled Grace, was released in 2021. She says that due to losing numerous loved ones the previous year, working on the project was what kept her from going over the edge. On April 4th, 2023, Kelly celebrated her 50th birthday.